Welcome Aries. Uh, this is going to be your October 2024 reading. This is going to be for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising. Um, you could certainly have planets in the sign of Aries. Um, you were, may have been intuitively guided. And what I mean by that is you may have seen the video and then something made you just keep on scrolling and then something called you back to it. That's your intuition. That's your spirit guides. Um, I read through my spirit guides and, you know, my guides connect to your guides. That's why one reading can resonate with so many different people. Because honestly, I feel like we're one big soul family. Even anyone who's new, it's just like, welcome to the soul family. Um, so, and also feel free to ask your guides for confirmation during a reading, you know, like, goosebumps, um, a number, like any type of sign, I feel like they'll find a way. Uh, you could certainly be in love with an Aries, whether platonically or romantically. Uh, I brought out a special deck just for that, you know, because a lot of the readings do talk about love. They really talk about life. So, um, but love is also a big part of them. So I brought out the Romance Angels, which is... It's, it's a new deck here. I already had this deck, um, but I, I did leave it back with my daughter. So I got another one. Uh, so we will use these kind of like bullet points. And we're going to use Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. This is what we'll start with. We will use the Gilded Tarot. I just, I don't know. I just love this for, um, I love this deck for clarifying. Uh, really to go deeper is what we're going to do. And I did bring out a second clarifying deck just in case, you know, if I feel called to it. Um, mm, I forget the name. Um, I think it's the Celestial Tarot. Um, and then for your main spread, we are going to use the Psychic Tarot. Okay. So um, I am doing these readings a little early because I am taking a break in October. Um, you know, I, I am, I'll probably still be doing a few personal readings, but then I'm going to take a break from that also. And then, um, I'll be back full force. So that's why you may be seeing it early, but don't even worry about that. I feel like a reading finds you right when you need it to find you. Um, and the more you can just trust in that. I feel it just means that you're 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 allowing your intuition to be open and that's always a good thing you know that is your GPS for this lifetime uh, so anyways let's go ahead and open up the reading Aries I am going to start with Mother Mary get her words of wisdom for my beautiful Aries my sea planters the ones who usher in spring, at least in the northern hemisphere. But, you know, when I think of Aries, I think that is the time to really start planting those seeds of intention so you can have a harvest in the fall, so to speak. I feel like that's your card. We're going to take it. And we may take another one at the end. We'll see. We'll just play it by ear. All right, we have truth, truth. I am lovingly honest with myself and others. I am lovingly honest with myself and others. Truth. We'll read just from the book at the end. Um, but it'll let us know why it's here in the reading. All right, so let's go ahead and bring in the Romance Angels. I'm going to give them a couple of shuffles. And um, I'm just taking a couple. And I'm going to bring the lid down. And let's begin. All right, it is safe for you to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. Wow, I like that. Open your heart or it is safe for you to love. 
open your heart to receive and give the highest energy of all. You know, that reminds me of like the law of attraction. I want to think about where my own vibration is uh, because that's what the universe must meet. So if my heart is open, then I have a better chance of if let's say I'm looking for love, of love finding me. You know, love happens in very unexpected ways. I don't feel like it's something we can really plan for. Um, so just keep that heart open. Be truthful with yourself and others. But I would say you're definitely yourself first. Mahalo soulmate. Soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate. Okay, so I have a feeling um, we will be talking about a soulmate in this reading. Uh, let's go ahead and do one more. So, it's safe for you to love. And a soulmate shows up. That may be why I said, like, you can't really plan love. And, you know, I feel like a soulmate shows up in divine timing at the right time. But again, maybe, you know, the more I just think about where my own vibration is, I understand that it is, it is safe for me to love again. Um, probably after the fact. But I feel like this soulmate is coming in divine timing. Okay, we had a card flip. Healing family issues. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. Interesting. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. Hmm. You know, it, it makes me feel like some of you, and I know this energy, where um, you may have, like, followed the path of one of your parents, you know, whether that be good or not so good. You know, um, like uh, like I think of my dad, who is very loving towards us kids, but definitely cheated a lot with my mother. Um, it was pretty aggressive with my mother. And, you know, even though I was a daddy's little girl, um, I could still see those parts of him. And it's interesting because I feel like the first person I ended up with was someone very much like those qualities I did not want. So that could also talk about what truth is, right? Being very honest with yourself. All right. I feel like I want to take one more, though. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. Open your heart to give and receive. Highest love of all. And a soulmate right in the middle. And then we have mm, forgiving and learning. Some of you, this is definitely tying back to your childhood. Um, but it can also tie back to like relationships that you've been in that maybe didn't work out, maybe worked against you. Um, and maybe it is time to try to like let it go, let it be. Um, maybe there's just something better on the horizon that you just aren't aware of yet. Again, I don't feel like, I feel like a soulmate comes in divine timing. And I feel like the main thing here is if I can just think about where my own vibration is at, and that's another reason why forgiving is so important. That automatically, um, I feel like, ri raises your vibration. Now, it doesn't mean you got to pick up the phone, call someone and be like, hey, I forgive you. Just forgive within your heart. As you release and heal the past, you experience love. Wow. In your present moments. One more time. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moment. Okay. So, safe for you to love, a soulmate, healing family issues, and forgiving and learning. All right, let's go ahead and bring in the... I'm going to slide these over a little bit. Um, let's bring in the psychic trail. 
This will be your main spread. Give it another shuffle. Let's give him a cut. All right, let me just re-situation, re, um, readjust my situation. I'm not sure the word I'm trying to say. And let's begin, Aries. Um, just real quick, I just want to let you know, last month for September, I did opposite signs and I enjoyed it so much like I could see because I feel like our opposite sign there's a lot we can learn from yours is Libra and I just did Libra so now I'm doing yours we'll see how they tie together Mm. All right, we start with the Nine of Cups. I like that a lot. Um, Nine of Cups really speaks about inner harmony. This is when, um, you know what, I feel like you, you, you're you doing exactly what the Romance Angels are asking you to do. You're doing exactly what Mother Mary is asking you to do, to being lovingly honest with yourself and others. And, you know, even forgiveness. What does that bring you? It brings you inner harmony. And, you know, I feel like it's a period of time in your life when you really feel good, even if you're single in this energy. I often read nines as singular type energy, but in this deck, it's also fulfillment of wishes. So we'll see. We have, look at this, two nines back to back, two great nines back to back, by the way. Material harvest. That's probably why I was saying in the beginning about planting those seeds. And then, you know, you need to plant seeds to have a harvest. This person feels um, humble, grateful, abundant. This The meaning of this card is successful self-employment. Now, it doesn't have to be self-employment. But I definitely feel like what it's speaking about, not only, you know, it, it makes me feel like you're very balanced this month. Interesting. So the Nine of Cups, Inner Harmony. You know what else I feel about the Nine of Pentacles is it's an energy where you feel very independent, um, independent within yourself. You know, I can take care of myself. I don't need someone else's money. Uh, doesn't, you know, promise that you always have. I feel like, well, you know what I feel? I feel like you will have enough. Like you'll have enough. Can't guarantee you'll be rich, but definitely feels like you're going to have enough. You're going to be able to stand on your own two feet. Um, and I also love this energy, you know, for those who, let's just say, are creating um, you know, like their own business or even if it's like a creative um venture, I feel there's a certain joy within it. Like you feel good. I feel like this is you feeling good, but I definitely feel like there was some lessons that were healed. And that's what allows this inner harmony to come about this success to come about you know those seeds that were planted this is now harvest time and you know who who benefits from the nine of pentacles energy you do it's your you benefit from it and number one it's your work right maybe even your hard work but i feel like this is seeing the fruits of your labor Great energy if you are, like, working from home. All right. 
Hmm. Tower. The tower. The devil. Called temptation in this deck. Uh, card of Capricorn, by the way. You know, this can be energy that feels illusionary. Sometimes I can feel, well, interesting, the next card I have in my hand, what I was about to say, is sometimes I can feel stuck within a situation. You know, some of you may have lost a job, maybe even lost a lover. And maybe now you're coming around, um, you know, starting to feel a little better. I feel like with the, let's just say, temptation right next to the tower, it's interesting because such positive energy here, and then we have, let's just say, darker energy here. Which one? Which one am I going to feed? You know, even in the devil's energy, here's this light, and I always feel like this is our saving light, our saving grace, and there's this key attached to it. And I feel like this key unlocks the next door. If nothing else, where Mother Mary is saying, you know, be truthful with yourself. This could certainly talk about people, things that you've been tempted to. Um, even for some reason, I'm feeling like even anger I may have hung on to. It may be time to consider to let it go. And that may be where forgiveness is. You know, not just forgiving, but learning from it. And then we have the Eight of Swords. Almost doesn't fit coming under the Nine of Cups. So the Eight of Swords is a self-created prison. And I would imagine it has something to do with this tower or this temptation. But it is a self-created prison. This is where I have built up walls. This is, you know, it's kind of illusionary energy, to be honest, where I feel like these walls are protecting me, but they're really not. You know, for some of you, you may have like pulled back from people, like felt this energy of wanting to be alone. And because it's a self-created prison, you're the only one who can uncreate it. But I feel like you're getting some help here. Like, I do feel like, and, and because what I'm feeling is during this period of time where I may have, like, kept myself back just from the human race, so to speak, I may have received some really good epiphanies, um, some clarity from my spirit guides and that alone may help us to break down these walls. Again, the romance angels telling you it's safe for you to love, whether platonically or romantically, and even loving yourself. This is called trapped in fear. But this is an illusion. And I kind of feel like that's why the devil came out, because it is an illusion. You know... We got to walk through that fear, not hide from it. We got to face it. Because the more that we're able to face fear, and a lot of times the fear that we have is really, um, it's really a facade. You know, sometimes it's just simply uh, like, um, I'm worried about what a new beginning would look like for myself. It is an eight, and an eight does stand for a new beginning. And, you know, eight is also the number of infinity. So I feel like this is a great place to really ask your guides to help you through this energy. Like, what am I fearful of? Why? Some of you may relate back to love. But then again, you know, I feel like... I feel like you may be holding yourself back from one area of your life, and that may be love, um, because, you know, something may have happened. Uh, and again, healing and forgiving and learning. The tower definitely would represent some type of disruption in your life. 
you know, sometimes the, the tower is outside of our control. But sometimes I feel like it's us who's throwing the tower. Again, this person has their finger on the light. And this light literally is going to unlock the next door. I just have to believe that. I get I got to get past the illusions of the dark. All right. Let's keep going. You know, I do feel like there's some of you who just kind of held yourself back, you know, or you may have said to the universe, I'm not interested in love. Um, and, and I think that's fine because I feel like if that's what I did, well, then I feel like my spirit guides reach me in different ways. All right. You don't, you're not ready for a partner yet. Well, how about some epiphanies on what it is you can do within your own life? Again, these two nines feel singular, but one is about finding that inner harmony. So that tells me that eventually you do break yourself free. Eventually, you do face whatever fears, you know, you're completely honest with yourself. And I feel like no time is wasted time because I feel like even if I'm like holding myself back from people, I'm still receiving epiphanies that can really bring me success. As long as I'm willing to put them into action. Look at this, two eights. Interesting. Interesting. You have two nines that are followed by two eights. So, completely different energy than the eight of swords. This is positive movement forward. To me, this means that someone has put down those walls. Someone is going to take a chance. Um, I often feel like the eight of wands is the energy of like what I think about, I bring about. You can see this person's heading towards the sun. Chances are they've been through some choppy waters, but they're going to move forward anyway. You know, it feels like for some of you, this could be like new adventures coming your way. But it is positive energy. So something has changed between the Eight of Swords and this positive movement forward. Um, you know, the Nine of Pentacles is looking right down at the Eight of Pentacles. And again, the person in the Nine of Pentacles, their hands are out. They're almost like in a receiving type of energy. Um, but also in a grateful type of energy. You know, I'm finding blessings within the smallest of things in my life. And I also feel like this is saying that some of you, you know, there may have been something that you really did want to bring to the world, um, whether it be, you know, whatever it may be. But I feel like it's the way you eventually make your money or you're about to start making money. You know, again, you're about to start seeing the material harvest of your own work. Eight of Pentacles is the energy of willing to go into something as the apprentice, but telling yourself that one day you will be the master teacher. You know, and some of this, this material harvest could be because you have learned how to forgive. And that's a big lesson. I feel like when we can forgive, even know our own part in a situation, and that's not to put blame on you, it's just, just to know oneself. Um, the Eight of Pentacles answers the question, can I be successful? And it tells you, if you're willing to focus on it, then the answer is yes. Some of you just may not, it may have taken time for you to really trust. You know, some of you could have lost a job lost a partner and that could have for a period of time felt like well, okay well that's the end like you know now what but i feel like now what 
is listening to your um your epiphanies your ideas and not being afraid of at least taking it a step forward in them you know the eight of pentacles says you don't need to know everything to begin this path this is about learning as you go but i have a feeling you have much more wisdom than you maybe you even know you do i could definitely see this if i lost a job where the universe is eventually showing me but Listen, my dear, you know, what you were doing wasn't bringing you the satisfaction, you know, even the harvest that you deserve. Um, so now let's start moving in a different direction. Let's unlock this next door. Let's move out of this fear-based energy and just take a chance, right? And mainly because we're opening up with the Nine of Cups, the fulfillment of wishes, but also inner harmony. You know, I don't feel like you can have inner harmony and the Eight of Swords at the same time. So that's why I'm reading it more of, you know, where I may have disconnected for a little while. Yet, I don't feel like time was wasted because I feel like your guides were giving you ideas, epiphanies, things that you could bring to the world, things that will be successful for yourself. Um... And eventually, I feel like will bring you great joy. Two nines and two eights, 99, 88. Even this, 1615. We have your major arcana, authority. This is the emperor. The Empress coming under the tower. You know, I don't feel like the Emperor fears the tower. Maybe in the past. The Emperor is someone who really has been through a lot. I feel like really has learned a lot through my life. Through my trials and tribulations. I've learned a lot. Emperor is normally someone we can look up to um, because of their wisdom. And this is you, male or female, by the way. Remember, we're both masculine and feminine energy. This feels like you're standing very strong. The only thing I'm really noticing, though, well, it's not the only thing, but what I am noticing is just um, his body language, how his arms are crossed. He could be a little resistant. But I don't see the emperor allowing a tower to affect them for very long. You know, I often feel the emperor is a business owner, is the leader of the people. And what qualifies me to lead other people? My experiences, what I've been through, how I've overcome them, all of that. Also the father figure. And we do have up here healing family issues. So some of you could be, heal, you know, healing good old dad. And look at this. And two fours back to back. 44. So we have 99, 88, 44. Foundation and achievements. Um, this is the marriage card. This is the commitment card. Look at the rainbow behind this house. You know, it's interesting because it is mirroring the Eight of Swords trapped in fear. But this is about true commitment. Some of you could have certainly been tempted to someone in your past who just, I don't know, I feel like they weren't able to fulfill your wishes they weren't able to give you what it is that you feel like you need like within um so it could have you know it could have faded away i feel like the one thing we have to learn to do is you know those things that want to fade away we've got to let them fade away because the human part of us wants to pull them back 
44, 88, 99. All right, let's keep going. So, marriage card is mirrored by the Eight of Wands. I'm sorry, the Eight of Swords. That trapped in fear. That's probably why I was feeling earlier that some of you, again, may have just disconnected, but not completely from life. You disconnected, like, from love. And, you know, listen, I feel like that's that's your choice, right? That's your choice. Um, but I don't feel like that stops a soulmate from coming in. Because sometimes a soulmate comes in right when we need them. A completely unexpected. So let's see. Keep going. We have the Seven of Cups. Choose wisely. I want to slide these all up. Give myself a little bit more room. Seven of Cups. Choose wisely. Maybe that's what some of you are worried about. You know, if I choose one of these cups, how do I know that it won't just drag me right back down again? How do I know? I feel like the more, again, I can uncreate these walls and really trust my own intuition, that's how you'll know. Like your intuition won't let you down, but you do have to trust it. And your intuition's like a muscle. The more you trust it, the more clarity you have, I feel. So this also feels like different options are opening up to you. And what do I do? What do I do? Which do I choose? Some of you, I feel like, you know, you're just living your life. You're getting back on your feet. You're feeling good about your life, let's say, and the things that you're doing in it. Um, but I do feel like this disconnect, like almost like I'm saying to the universe, you know, I really, I don't know that I want love. I don't know if I'm ready. Maybe some of my past choices weren't the best choices. So I want to make sure that, you know, if I invite love back in my life again, that it also be of a high vibration. And, you know, the Eight of Swords is not going to help that situation. Eight of Swords is just going to make it more difficult to make a decision because you have a decision to be made. But listen, it's mirroring fulfillment of wishes. Hmm. Stand your ground. Two sevens. Look at the synchronicities. Nines, eights, sevens, fours. They're coming out in pairs. Choose wisely. Stand your ground. Positive movement forward, trapped in fear. Material harvest, fulfillment of wishes. Wow. Um, just the synchronicities of the numbers are kind of blowing me away. Let's keep going and then we will go deeper. So, standing your ground, whoa, we're not going to take all those, that's half my deck, but we are going to take, look at this, truth, same message as Mother Mary, um, this is judgment, this is your spiritual team, they are calling you to the present moment, that's judgment's main message, I need you in the present moment, why? Because this is where I send you the signs. This is when you can let those walls of the Eight of Swords down. And trust in us. 
it is mirroring the tower. So I feel like it's like your spiritual team is like, we've been with you through all of this. The good, the bad, the ugly. And some things were faded out of your life. But can you trust that it's because something bigger, something better, you know, a change of life is happening? This is about a rebirth. After the tower. I mean, that's kind of beautiful. You know, the tower, not so great. Um, someone could have given us the tower again. It could have been like a loss of a job, a loss of a partner, whatever it may be. Judgment is like, you know, that's the past. Now I need you in the present moment. I need you, you know, interesting because the seven of cups making a choice. So I feel like your spiritual team is sending you a few signs. But it definitely feels like it's taking the, the power away from the tower. Truth, truth. I feel like for some of you, the day will come back. The day will come when you will look back and you will be thankful for some of the things that have ended. Now, when I say that, I feel like because it's replaced by something potentially that is better. It's almost like I'm getting my my money down, right? My career, what it is I want to do in the world. Um, you know, learning to trust myself and bring it to the world. Again, I don't need to know everything. I feel like a lot of you, it's like pulling from your own experiences. You know, it's like I could write, I could write a book about my life type of energy. Rejoice in celebration. Beautiful. Mirroring that seven of cups. So choose wisely. This makes me feel like you make the right choice. And listen, that choice can be different for everyone. And then with that comes another four. Rest and rejuvenation. This is the four of swords. This is healing. This is healing of the past. You know, I love that this person is sitting out in nature by trees, the wisdom, right? These trees have been here for hundreds of years. Like we've seen it all. Extract the wisdom from us. I feel like what's being healed? Well, first of all, the fear. Probably your heart. You know, I feel like you must have taken the advice of forgiveness. Again, doesn't mean I have to pick up the phone and call someone and be like, I forgive you. I mean, if you can and you want to do that, but you don't have to. This is just, this is coming into balance within yourself. Yeah, the three of cups, that's the energy of joy. And, you know, um, the Eight of Swords energy is like, it just doesn't fit. That's the energy I feel like I have to concentrate on and bring those walls down. And again, it's probably somehow related to this tower, even temptations. You know, I may have just kept, maybe if it's speaking of love, like, you know, I kept pulling in this lower vibrational energy. and. You know, they never disappoint. They just kept giving me towers type of energy. And that may be why I have to be truthful with myself. I have to let go of what really wants to fade away now. I got to let it heal. I got to let myself experience what I feel is a joyful time. After probably some hardship. You know, four and a three, seven. That could be a spiritual lesson. 
but also spiritual growth. All right. Mm, conflict and defeat on the bottom of the deck. So, goodbye to that. Number five, change. You know, this is trying to overcome those obstacles. Can I? The answer is yes, you can. It, you know, it, it just feels like energy is changing for you. Um, but in the best of ways. I almost feel like your spiritual team is saying, you know, there is an opportunity for some some wishes coming true. There is an opportunity for you to, like, really do the things that you want to do in this lifetime. You know, life is short. And we don't want to spend our whole life in this fear type energy. Even if I'm just taking a step forward, sometimes that's all I need to do. And I feel like with your spiritual team here, you know, this is guidance also. Like we are going to send you signs. And, you know, this is only meant to bring joy into your life, but also healing. Who's under that emotional withdrawal, the Eight of Cups, under conflicts and defeats. So some of you, this Eight of Swords was created due to emotional situations. Um, again, it's, it's mirrored by the Commitment card. I, I do feel like I may have given someone a lot of time or even maybe more than one person, but I kept bringing in the same type of energy that kept resulting in this tower. And that's where I feel like truth is so important. You know, where was my vibration? Did I lower my vibration to be with another? And then it just didn't work out. And I feel like the more we think about our own vibration again, the more we're honest with ourselves, even know ourselves, like saying, okay, I get it. And listen, I know this energy where, you know, there was a period in my life where I just kept, kept bringing one bad relationship after another. And I had to look at myself. All right, let's go ahead and bring the Gilded Tarot right in. And let's go ahead and go deeper. So to me, it looks like October is going to be a great month for your money, um, for what it is you want to do in the world, for creative projects. Some of you working from home. I feel like the Nine of Cups is saying some wishes are coming through. But that Eight of Swords underneath it, am I going to allow? You know, you do a free will. And your spiritual team knows that. I feel like they still try to reach you. But ultimately, you have the free will to say yay or nay. All right. So we're going to start at the top. But read it as a whole. You know... When I do Tarot, to me, it's like your movie. The movie of your life, at least your current life. We have the Four of Pentacles. This can certainly talk about your foundation. You can talk about your home. And that may be why I felt like some of you may be working out of your home. It doesn't have to mean exclusively. But I feel like, you know... And I do feel like, you know, with a quiet mind, you're receiving epiphanies, ideas. The only thing with the Four of Pentacles, especially because it's just the stance that the Emperor is taking, I want to be careful that I'm not too resistant to, let's just say, what my spiritual team is showing me, offering me. Because I, this can be like my way or the highway but your spiritual team may be saying listen there's there's new avenues there's different ways 
but it can also just speak about your home, like some of you making money out of your home. I feel like your money sector is like on fire. Whether it just be the beginning, we have the Queen of Wands coming over the Nine of Pentacles. Queen of Wands, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. But you know how I read him. I don't really think about the sign after that. To me, this queen is queen of action. This, this is someone who moves according to her desires. She doesn't really let fear get in the way. She probably learned how to overcome that fear. That's probably why. I also love this over the Nine of Pentacles again as it relates to your career or your money um, or even self-employment. Because this is someone who is going to take a chance. We have the Strength card over the Tower. That's kind of nice. This is the ability to overcome. Is the card of Leo. Also number eight, a new beginning after the Tower. You know, but in the strength card, what you're really finding when you do look within, because let's not forget, we have the Eight of Cups below that. And the Eight of Cups is really looking at my emotional house, finding clarity within it, no longer allowing like past cups that have been knocked over to affect what can be next in my life. This is really knowing yourself and it is about courage. The courage to overcome these towers. The courage not to let fear get in the way. You know, here's our third eight. Could it be three new beginnings? Potentially. But I really feel like this is about knowing who I am now. Even understanding these towers and overcoming them. And then look at this, the star. Your hopes, your dreams, your wishes, and manifesting them. With your spiritual team on the table, they're certainly part, they're, they're trying to help you to manifest. Um, Card of Aquarius. Interesting is coming over temptation. I feel like um, just because the star is mirroring that four of pentacles where I do feel a little resistance in there. Your spiritual team may just be asking you to think about what your hopes and your dreams are and are they good for you? You know, sometimes we can wish for someone to come back in that, that really just didn't treat us right to begin with that may have given us tower after tower or it just kept resulting in a tower so i i feel there's a real sense of needing to know oneself and knowing one you know like knowing my part within my life you know it's like the energy of when i know better i do better but the star is also mirroring the Three of Cups down here. Rejoice. Rejoice in celebration. Also mirroring that healing card also. You know, I feel like if you've had the courage to, let's just say, dissect the tower understand it, even knowing my own part in it, then there's no need for me to create these barriers, these walls of the Eight of Swords, this fear. I'm more willing now to take a chance, take a chance on myself, but also just take a chance on what life has to offer. Don't forget, we also have soulmates up there.
and then your spiritual team literally saying that, you know, again, this is about the present moment energy and it's about a rebirth, but it's saying that this rebirth is something that you will celebrate. It's something that's going to bring joy to your heart. Um, Leo and Aquarius just have to say that also. Hmm, I like that. Six of Swords over the Eight of Swords. You know, Six of Swords, you got to look back one card and understand what it is you're leaving. And that's toxic energy. Toxic people. Toxic thoughts. And this is moving away from that. This is, this is you telling your spiritual team, I do want a better life. I do want this abundance. I do want my wishes to come true. But now I'm pretty clear on what type of wishes I want to come true. Like I'm done with the toxicity. For someone who doesn't know how to treat me right, well, that's their loss now because I'm moving on to bigger and better things here. You know, the Six of Swords can be temporarily difficult energy because it is movement. And, you know, we have a five on the bottom of the deck, which does speak about change. And I feel like this is you allowing that change. So te temporarily difficult energy, but really is the promise of reaching calmer waters very soon. We have, interesting, the Tower over the Eight of Pentacles. And then we have the Five of Cups over the Emperor. What a mix of energy you're getting here. I can't help but think some of you, you've had changes within your jobs. Um, and as horrible as that may sound, I feel like at the, in the same breath, you're being led to something that I feel like you can call your own. You know, positive movement forward with the tower over it. I don't feel like the tower is affecting your positive movement. If nothing else, this is you where I feel like you're not allowing that tower or towers to like stop you from living your life, stop you from enjoying the possibilities of what may be. You know, it's interesting because I feel like some may have lost a job, but some may have lost a love. In the Five of Cups, first of all, it's a five, so change. But this is where my focus is on what I have lost. Right, so I'm thinking back. The judgment is calling you to the present. So I got to be careful when I get lost in this energy because it can turn into woe is me. I feel like there was a real need to like really look at your own energy. You know, and who, you know, what type of people were I, was I calling into my life? I feel like they just gave you like emotional uh, disparity. But when this person does make this change, when this person says, you're right, I'm not going to keep focusing on these past hours, on this past pain, and I'm going to start something new. I'm going to look forward instead of back. What do they find? Two cups. Two cups. And... We already have the soulmates out. I won't even say that maybe for those that this is relating to on a relationship um, basis, I'm not going to say um, what was I not going to say? I don't know. 
I don't know what I was not going to say. That's interesting. Um, but what I do want to say is, again, this is speaking of change. And I feel like you, you know, like the tower and then the strength card over that tower. So those who have broken my heart in the past, those who like, you know, to be with them, I had to lower my own vibration. Now I feel like I know better. And again, this talks about a soulmate potentially entering your life. I say potentially because you also have to allow it. Well, I feel like the soulmate will enter, but it's going to be up to you whether you say yes or no. And judgment again is saying, let's not focus on the past. Let's think about today and what can be tomorrow. Some of you definitely have been dealing with an emotional situation and it may have held you back for a little while. And, you know, these nines being the very first energy that shows, you know, I often feel nine is about reflection, but it's about final reflection. So I feel like some of you are making some real decisions to move forward in your life. You know, what didn't work, didn't work. And if I, maybe I'm having the realization where other people and it can be in all areas of my life where, you know, I could have just been surrounding myself with lower vibrational people. And therefore, I had to lower my vibration. But I feel like your spiritual team is like, no, no, my dear. No, my dear. There's so much left. There's so much more to experience. And, you know... These towers, they're disruption. And yes, it can be the end of something. But I feel like often, especially when judgment shows up on the table, I feel like the towers are really, in the long run, are saving grace. Because let's not forget, you have the star here, your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. And it's mirroring fulfillment of wishes. But I just have to allow it. Now, with that Six of Swords coming over the Eight of Swords, I feel like you are. It's almost like I'm cracking you open slowly but surely. Like your heart chakra is, is slowly opening. Your third eye is slowly opening. And that's okay. You take it at your own pace. You know, but... Just understand if past towers, if if I keep focusing on that loss and don't believe that there can be a new day, you know, new opportunities, even new people, then I kind of get stuck there. And that's what the five of cups, that's the, the danger of the five of cups. It can turn into woe is me. But with the strength card above it, I feel like this is you having true realization. And maybe even healing. Well, we have healing on the table. But also forgiving. And sometimes it's even forgiving ourselves. We have the seven of swords. Hmm. I have to say, the seven of swords has been coming out a lot lately. And the seven of swords is coming over a commitment. But yet, we have temptation above it. But it's also connected to healing, though. And it's also mirroring the Eight of Swords, but also the Six of Swords. So the Seven of Swords, listen, it can be a number of things. It can be our own thought system. It can be someone who, who has a habit of taking more than their fair share. You know, I could see that relating to work. Like, you know, my ideas my epiphanies being taken by another and maybe my boss does nothing about it so i say okay well then i'm just going to go do my own thing i'm going to create my own business 
if it's relating to love, then this is someone's energy that really wasn't trustworthy anyway. You know, and I may have given them multiple chances. And I feel like in each time they probably let me down. This is a taker, not a giver. And I really don't feel like many of you are in, like, I don't feel like you, you're you still with that person. Even if it's relating back to your career. Because healing makes me feel like, okay, I'm able to let that go. Allow it to fade away. Right? Use the key of temptation to unlock that next door. You know, your hopes, your dreams, and your wishes lie on that next door. Just like judgment is saying. Right? Truth. Truth of oneself. Epiphanies. Ideas. Definitely feels like you're putting them to use but also a rebirth. And to me, a rebirth means that your vibration is lifting. And I feel like your vibration is lifting because you're being very honest with yourself. You're saying, okay, I get it. I did lower my vibration to try to meet another and it just kept resulting in a tower, however that may be. Um, but maybe I just need to look. First of all, I do need to know if that's the case. Do I lower my vibration to be with another? And is that how I want my life to look? Also, some of you, again, you've been with someone who just takes and takes and takes. Yet, even if you split up, you know, our human mind, human heart can still miss that person. But the Six of Swords is saying, I see it now. I understand it now. I even understand the energy it's caused me to do. Like, it's caused me to go within. It's caused me to block opportunities. It's caused me to raise these walls where really, let's just say the blame belongs on this person. You know, and it's interesting, it's coming under the star. So I feel like the person in the Seven of Swords would have no problem, like, you know, as as these wishes start to come true for you. Like, they didn't, like, I see no problem with their hands being out, like, gimme, gimme, gimme. But these, you know, what's coming next, these wishes that your spiritual team is saying is really going to bring you joy. It just doesn't fit with the Seven of Swords or the Eight of Swords. And that's why I love the Six of Swords really clarifying this line. I know now what's toxic. Even my own thought system. You know, I, we can lie to ourselves. And we have to know that. We can tell ourselves, oh, but there is no one else like this person. But it just doesn't feel like the case because, again, soulmates. I feel like first I have to clear this energy. You know, I need to know myself. I need to know myself as a lover. Do I have a tendency to just give and give and give? And even though I want to receive... Knowing that I haven't, have I accepted that anyway? Do I allow other people to, you know, it almost feels like steal my dreams, my wishes. And how long am I going to do that for? I feel like this is about flipping the script now, turning the page.
And I can understand why, you know, maybe I'm completely open to like what the universe sees next for me as it relates to my money and even finding this inner harmony, even more reason to find inner harmony, especially if you've been dealing with like past hardships, things that were outside of your control. It's hard then to trust that the potential of what's next can be of a higher vibration. And that's why you want to think about your own vibration, the law of attraction. What I think about, I bring about. But now I feel like this is saying you're moving to a higher vibration and therefore the universe is matching that. Like goodbye, goodbye hardship, goodbye, goodbye to those who, you know, tell me one thing and do another. You know, I can miss you, but it's becoming clearer and clearer of the type of person that you are and not you, them. You're becoming clearer and clearer. The Ace of Swords coming over the Seven of Cups. Okay, well, that feels like some type of communication coming in. And you're making a decision whether, you know, it's like your phone is ringing. And you're like, should I answer that phone? You know, a text is coming in. Do I respond back? It's in the same line as your spiritual team. So I have a feeling they had some, what do I want to say? Some say so in this. You know, it can talk about divine timing. That's why your spiritual team calls you to the present moment. This can certainly represent ideas, epiphanies, your own truth. You know, in living within your own truth. But again, it can be like ring, ring. And then temperance. Divine timing, my dear. You know, temperance's message is first patience. And sometimes I feel like the universe is being patient with us. And other times we're being patient with the universe. You know, this is the reminder to trust within divine timing. All good things in the right time. You know, it's mirroring the soulmates. And I kind of get that because... I don't feel like this is the same person that I potentially may have gone, you know, two towers. I could have given someone two chances. I could, I could have given many chances. But I feel like the truth here is that you're realizing that you've had to lower your own vibration to be with them. And you're saying... No more. No more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. What you say? Divine timing. Marrying the soulmates. Trusting in divine timing. I mean, if we just look at the line above it. The Eight of Swords, the Tower, the Five of Cups, the Seven of Swords, all difficult energy. But the Six of Swords comes out. So now I know it's toxic. Now I know who's toxic. I even know my own thoughts that are toxic. This is about moving forward from that Tower. And I feel like in the Five of Cups, you must, you must have changed your focus because divine timing now coming out. And again, it means it's the right time, mirroring the soulmates, but also mirroring how, you know, I feel like this is like twofold. This is talking about love, but this is also talking about, you know, what you do in the world, what you can do in the world. 
and and a real love for it. And listen, I may not know that until I step into it. You know, it's like how I started Tarot. I really knew nothing about Tarot, but I just kept doing free readings. Um, I started on Facebook. I just did free readings. And the more I did it, the more I opened up to my spirituality. And the more I opened up to my spirituality, the more Tarot just felt so natural to me. I knew nothing about it beforehand, but something piqued my interest. And I just took a step forward. And now, many, 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 many years later, it's what I do in the world. I could say the same thing about love. You know what I mean? Like, and then I feel this energy again. Uh, when I when I know better, I do better. And taking that judgment off of yourself, you know, don't judge yourself for the things that you had wished had hoped out. Sometimes we got to learn we can't control another person. But if I have to try to control them, what's the point, right? Okay, but let's not take a negative turn here because I feel like Temperance is saying this is about divine timing, mirroring the soulmates, but also mirroring um, material harvest and positive movement forward. So what's ever in this Ace of Swords feels like good news to me. Hand me a new job offer. It can mean multiple things. You know, I'm looking at the sword mirroring the star here, your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. And I always want to remind you in the star's energy, I feel like, you know, we need to work hand in hand with divine to bring these dreams about. It's not about like dreams just falling on our lap. It's about, you know, the willingness to look at the tower and say, you know, okay, I don't want that again and learning from it. And gaining that courage to like reclaim your life again. Whoa. All right. We're going to. Okay. We'll keep that. That came face up. But we have Sungo on the floor. All right. So. We have. Let's go by order. We have the two of pentacles first. You know what I like about the two of pentacles? You know, they call it the juggler's card. It can mean like there's a lot of balls up in the air. Can I, you know, can I add another one? Can I juggle another one? But I also feel this is about using your logical mind. Not the fear-based mind. You know, to me, it's grounded energy. Making a decision from grounded energy it's coming right over your spiritual your spiritual team truth then we have the five of wands but look at that it's in reverse so the five of wands to me in the upright is a lot of drama fighting it literally is where no one wants to back down again it reminds me of like you know Am I trying to win a fight that's just unwinnable? Am I trying to change someone who's just unchangeable? I feel like the best thing I can do in the Five of Wands is walk away from it. Is not get pulled into the drama. And it's showing in reverse, so I like that a lot. And then the Page of Pentacles. Could this all have just been learning lessons for your soul? Yes. I feel like our soul is always learning. Our soul really came into this lifetime to learn and to expand. You know, remember, Earth is our classroom. And there's a lot of lessons, but there's also a lot of blessings. So some of these things you've just been learning. You know, a page to me can also be what's in the atmosphere. 
So taking the things that I've learned and put them into good use. I can relate right back to that Nine of Pentacles. You know, one thing I'm learning is if I think that someone's going to change in this energy, because it is all ego, chances are very small, and it is a five. So it does ask for change, but if I can't change another, the one thing I can do is change myself change my circumstances, change my situation. Some of you change your location, whatever it may be, whatever needs to be done. You know, I also love that this is like, again, your spiritual team who it, in the psychic tarot says truth. And I love that it's mirroring also Mother Mary's message. I am lovingly honest with myself and others. But some people, no matter how hard you try, they're not going to change. Well, so be it. So be it. Because I feel like this is about you, you know, on to the next. All right, there's a couple things I'm going to look at. First thing I'm going to look at is the Ace of Swords. And I want just a little bit more clarity in the of the Ace of Swords. All right, wow. Well, mm -mm. Nine of Swords. Seven of Cups. And then the Moon. Um, interesting, I just did a Virgo New Moon reading, and um, I kind of loved it, be, to be honest with you. But let's just look at this for a second. So here's this Ace of Swords, which, number one, stands for truth. Number two, can stand for some type of communication that's coming your way. And I say that because it's over the Seven, seven of Cups, so you are making a decision here. Now, unfortunately, the Nine of Swords showed up. And the Nine of Swords is, you know, it's a lot of worry. It is a nine. So it it is worth, it's worth it for me to like, to reflect upon it, right? But not get lost in it. The Nine of Swords, really, the meaning of the card is unnecessary worry. And then that Seven of Cups, so... I feel like it's like ring, ring, but I'm so afraid if I pick up this phone, am I not just doing what I've done before? Well, if it's the same energy of before, then I'd say don't pick up that phone. But because it's in the line with temperance and your spiritual team, I feel like this ace is really meant to enhance your life. And then the moon comes out. Well, the moon, first of all, is the card of Pisces, ruler of Cancer. Um, and I know I haven't given a lot of signs here, but again, I don't really read them as signs. The moon can talk about uncertainties and that can be a little fearful, right? How do we know that this next opportunity, this next phone call, whatever it may be, how do I know that it's going to be good? Well, if you're feeling good within yourself, if you've had the courage to really to look deep and really get to know yourself, if you've opened yourself up to your spiritual team, you know, and you're trusting in your intuition as much as you can, then it's not about, you know, it's about the journey, not where we're going to end up. Sometimes we forget that the journey is really what this is all about. Now, the moon can also speak about very dreamy type energy. And that could be a little scary after I've just dealt with this type of energy. But it's also in line with the soulmates. Okay, so I'm going to take that, but I want to look at it again. Knowing that, because I feel like 
That's one way I can handle the ace. But let's do it again. I feel like I just want to go over it one more time. And again, that ace is coming over the seven of cups and the seven of cups just came out again. And I trust myself in choosing a cup that's showing up. Some type of fulfillment. I would say, don't try to project it too far out in the future, number one. Just takes a step forward. And, you know, because things evolve um, on a daily basis. And if it's speaking about love and you're fearful of that, then taking taking your time is some somewhat of a way of protecting yourself because I feel like people will always reveal to you who they are. But sometimes we don't give them the time. Well, hello, lovers. Hello, lovers. So first of all, card of Gemini. The meaning of the card is a head over heart decision. Coming over the Seven of Cups, that certainly applies. But it's also telling us who's coming in. You know, again, we opened the reading with it's safe for you to love and then a soulmate. You know, in this image also, you can see where the feminine, like her energy is in the current moment or the current She's in current energy is what I'm trying to say. And the masculine hasn't quite reached me yet. But it's like, I can feel it. I can feel it. And maybe that's what it's asking you to do. Allow yourself to feel what's coming in. Allow yourself, you know, if this is talking about, let's say, like a phone call or a text or just any type of communication. Like, allow yourself to feel it. Before you shut it down. Hello lovers. And by the way. This six is relating right back to this six. Which is the six of swords. And that's where I'm leaving that toxicity. I'm letting the past be the past. So this lover. The, these lovers. Are on the other side of that. On the other side of the toxicity. And it's right next to temperance. So I feel like I can trust it. There you are again. So we know you're one of these people in the lovers. King of Swords. And be a Gemini. The lovers is the card of Gemini. Um, Libra, your opposite, which I just did. Some of you may relate back to that reading. That's why I'm doing these readings, uh, these opposite signs, because I feel like our opposite sign, there's a lot we can learn from each other. So that could mean that. Um, so with a Gemini Libra, uh, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, we do have Aquarius on the board. But to me, the King of Swords speaks about, especially with the Ace of Swords right there, truth, integrity. So this means someone of integrity, someone who speaks the truth. This is someone who is a good communicator. Right next to you. And this king can be male or female, by the way. And then, hello, eight of wands. When I think about it, I bring about. You know, I often picture these, like four of these wands are my intentions going out into the universe. And the other four are coming back to me. Because again, the universe, the universe must meet me right where I am. This is also fast moving energy. That can be a little scary. But then look what it goes to the Ten of Cups. This is a house of love. 
the house of harmony. And I love that first, the very first card speaks of inner harmony, first and foremost. Well, then I am ready for the Ten of Cups. Why? Because I feel good about myself. Because I feel like I can now stand on my own two feet. Because now I've been able to break down the past, see it for what it truthfully is. Understand that lower vibrational energy will always try to pull me back. But I have the strength now to overcome that. Say no way. No way, Jose. So, Ten of Cups is mirroring the lovers. And then you come out as being part of the lovers. Something told me to clarify that again. So it's almost like we're seeing two sides of the coins, right? I can either look at it this way from a fearful place and therefore make it very hard for me to make a decision. You know, the moon, though very dreamy energy, it can still talk about uncertainties. And maybe even though I feel like sometimes I'm not, you know, we have free will. So it's hard to determine will two people end up in this Ten of Cups because of free will, right? If let's say the Nine of Swords, that that extreme worry doesn't go away. Am I not then putting it on this new person and will they understand it? Chances are they will. You know, I feel chances are they will. But I also feel like this is someone who is meant to come in in the right time. So to me, that means that you've done a lot of, you know, I, I don't know. I hate to say work on yourself, but you have a lot of clarity within yourself now. So I feel like the potential of it going to the Ten of Cups, this love, feels very high. You know, I don't think anybody can guarantee you because, again, free will. But I do get this feeling that, first of all, we do have the commitment card here. And then you being put in this decision mode. Why? Well, because the Ace of Swords comes in. So, again, some type of communication. Well, the King of Swords would be a great a great energy of communication because this is someone who who loves to communicate. And I'm not again, I'm not even reading the sign. And I feel like the Eight of Wands coming before the Ten of Cups. So what I think about, I bring about. If I can stay in this positive loving energy moving forward, then my chances of, or our chances of really creating this beautiful home together, I feel like are very, very good. I'm also noticing how the Five of Cups is here and then the Ten of Cups is here. So sometimes what I'm, um, when I'm just focusing on what I have lost, I'm not considering the potential of what can be. So these towers, though it is disruption, though it can be painful, though you may need to spend some time healing it, it also opens up new doors. And within the Page of Pentacles, I feel like what this is saying is really a lot of this has been about lessons that you're learning as a soul. And so you can have soul expansion. Well, when your soul expands, when your soul learns these certain lessons, I can almost guarantee you that you will not lower your vibration to be with another. It will be the opposite. Wow. And then temperance right there. You know, and your spiritual team, it's like, trust in our signs. Trust in the epiphanies that we give you. Like, be open to that. 
if I can't be open to much, but I'm open to that, it's going to lead you on what feels like the right path. But that's not to look back and say like, oh, what was wrong with me? Hey, listen, again, your soul came here to learn. And what better energy to teach you than these towers? And how that you can overcome them. That's the main thing. Listen, I've had a lot of towers in my life. And I understand getting lost in it for a little while. But I also now know the other side of it. Right? Believing in the unbelievable. Believing that there is this soulmate energy out there for you. But again... But I'm not interested in lower vibrational people anymore. And that may be why it takes time, right? It's like the clearing of the past is opening up the door to your future. And it looks bright. Okay, I'm going to pick this up. But hello, lovers. Oh, I didn't even see this. The chariot. I don't even know when it came out. Well, let's talk about the chariot. First of all, it's card of cancer. But the chariot speaks about unlimited potential. So it may be one way to help you move into energy. Um, I feel like the chariot, first and foremost, needs balance. You know, it's like... Having a car, but having four flat tires, it's not going to get me far, right? I got to fill those tires up. The, the chariot is moved by your intentions, not by the reins of the horse. That's why it really becomes unlimited potential. So I, if I can believe in, not only just believe, but also create this positive energy, then I feel like for those who may say, well, you know, can it, can it be? Well, your intentions are creating it. Your intentions are nine tenths of the law. But it does represent unlimited potential. It can represent movement. You know what I mean? Like some of you making physical moves. Um, but, you know, maybe you didn't have a choice. But then you find yourself in the perfect place. In the perfect time. Like trust in the miracles of divine. And I say miracles, but what, what I mean when I say miracles are the blessings that maybe you didn't expect, but you do deserve. Again, if I think, uh, I think of myself as a soul learning on this earth. And then as I learn, I evolve. And as I evolve, it just brings back more, more energy to allow me to evolve even more. I just feel like for some of you, you are now evolving also with another. And I don't feel like it has anything to do with lower vibrational energy. And it listen, however long it takes us to learn, that's okay. That's why divine is being patient. All right. Um, I just want to go back and I want to look at the star. And card flew off the table. Hello, Empress. Wow. Now, many of you know how I love the Empress and the Emperor in the same reading. Because they truly fulfill each other. You know, the Empress gives you a few messages. It reminds you to keep your heart open. Stay loving. Stay nurturing. Don't allow the people of the past who broke your heart, didn't know how to treat you right. You know, even even ourselves, right? Forgiving ourselves, like I didn't know better then, but now I do. So this is someone who 
Her heart is open. She's loving. She's nurturing. She's the mother figure. And it's interesting because the moon is also the feminine energy. And we saw the moon. Um, but this person is also very powerful and strong. Why? Because she knows herself. You know, just like the emperor, I feel like she's gone through it. You know, she's walked the path of all the queens. The emperor has walked the path of all the kings. And again, we're both masculine and feminine. But I feel like this is talking about this soulmate energy. This is also someone who is very creative. Who receives epiphanies. And really does trust in divine timing. You know, sometimes you get these epiphanies and maybe they weren't meant to be used immediately. Maybe I needed to just think about them for a little while, a little bit. See what's the best way I can use them and then give birth to them. So any epiphanies that her spiritual team sends her, she's going to put them to use. She's going to give birth to them. And it's coming right over the star. And there's nothing I like more in a love reading than seeing the emperor and the empress in the same reading. You know, if you're a male watching this interested in a female, this would also tell me that this person is, as, is in a higher vibrational energy. It doesn't mean perfect. It just means I know what serves me and I know what doesn't serve me. I know what's good for me and I know what's not good for me. Right? I'm, I'm no longer allowing people of the past to have an influence of what my future can look like. Because with temperance here and judgment here, it can look quite divine. The Nine of Cups, inner fulfillment, fulfillment of wishes. The Nine of Pentacles, material harvest. I mean... The Four of Wands, a true commitment. The Ten of Cups, the House of Love, the House of Harmony. It feels like all your bases are being covered here, Aries. You know, but it's definitely showing like the things that I needed to let go of, the things I needed to overcome. And then it's like the rewards of that. You know, just like there's bad karma, there's also good karma. And some of you, that's what you're creating, good karma for yourselves. And I promise you, the people of the past who, like, have just broken your heart, um, those that have stolen ideas, whatever, it may they, whatever these people may have done, they're not going to hold a place in your future. It's, it'll be more like you won't even remember them. You may even thank them because of where you're, where you're going compared to where you've been. Hmm. All right. I think I'm going to let that be. Um, but I do want to read Mother Mary which is truth. Oh. You drew this card because some truth is being hidden. Most likely you are the one hiding it from yourself. How do you really feel about your present situation? This card counsels you to take an honest inventory, admitting your most vulnerable feelings to yourself. If someone isn't being forthright with you, you'll know it within your heart. The first person who comes to mind is probably involved in this dishonesty. Sometimes people aren't truthful because their fears of conflict make them people please. Other times dishonesty stems from a lack mentality arising when individuals believe that they have to take what they want because there's not enough to go around. Take the time to sit quietly in meditation and ask God and Holy Spirit to reveal the truth 
about your present situation. Although truth has a subjective component and opinions about the same situation will vary from person to person, there's a need for greater honesty in order to heal and resolve the present situation. And I feel like if I do that, then I'm just going to be surprised at how my life is going to look. Again, I know different people move, you know, at different times and without any type of judgment. I feel like this is just saying the more that you can just see your situation and be as honest as you can about it, like who... Who and what have I given my time to that just keeps letting me down? Do I expect things to be different? Because chances are they won't be. But what have you learned? And what can you do with that? With that knowledge, that sacred knowledge? Some of you, you're creating real success for yourself. You're receiving real epiphanies that you can truly put to use. Some of you, probably most of you, it really is about now wishes being fulfilled. And I have to say, like the energy of truth seems to be the most important energy. And that seems to be the key that unlocks this next door. Will you let it be? Will you let it be? Whispering the words of wisdom, let it be. I love you guys. I'm gonna let that be. Um, can't wait. Can't wait to read your messages. As always, your comments. Um, I feel like you know. I say this all the time, but I really believe it. I feel like sharing your experiences really does help others. You know, that's kind of what the Empress and the Emperor do. They help lift people. And a lot of times they're lifting because they've been there. They get it. They've understood. They understand it. I know it, right? I've been in all these situations. I remember feeling lost. I remember being tempted back. Do you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, many of you know my story. There was a period where I was just getting tempted back into something. And then, lo and behold, my phone rang. And it was Sam, the person I'm with now, that I'm now living with. Um, did I know that was going to happen? The answer is no. But now we live together. And it was during a very weak moment I was having. And that phone call changed everything. Everything. And even as it relates to my finances, you know, I was working at a job uh, managing a fitness center that I thought I was going to retire from. Um, and then one day I get let go. Well, actually, I got de I got demoted. And I said, there's no way I'm going to accept that because there was no reason behind it other than they didn't want to give me the money that they had promised me. So they thought, well, we'll demote her. Well, instead, I quit. And I said, there's no way. And I had to fight for unemployment. Well, I didn't even have to fight. I just told them. I called unemployment as soon as I got home and I told them the story. I told them exactly how it went down. And then they contacted my boss and it was like immediately I got unemployment because they were wrong. But if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be doing what it is I do today. And I have to tell you, my dream has always been working from home, controlling my own time. Getting up when I want to get up. I was never a morning person. Never. I'm still not a morning person. I'm a nighttime person. I stay up to like 2 o'clock in the morning, if not later. Um, but it's what I enjoy. 
So, you know, having to be at work at 8 o'clock in the morning, I always hated it. So, though that was a tower, now I see the blessing in it, right? And that's what time gives you. It allows you to have that understanding. And I'm only telling you my experiences because I have been in all of these. So when I know what your spiritual team is saying, like, we need you in the present moment, there are signs being sent your way. And you do get to decide, am I going to follow them or am I going to ignore them? I have a feeling for a while I probably ignored them until one day I decided to follow them. And then, you know, it's like they piqued my interest and that's all they needed to do. And then I just couldn't get enough. And now I'm doing something that I just love. And I feel like it's my way of helping others. And that's important to me. So do I make as much money? No. But do I have inner satisfaction? Yes. And that means more to me than the money. So I guess I'm just saying this because you never know what can be next. You just need to be open to it. You know, even if you're unsure of a sign, you can certainly ask for that sign to be sent again. Or you can just take a step forward in it and see if it just starts to open up expand and the next thing you know you're living a different life and you're loving every moment of it i love you guys i thank you as always and that's why i ask you if you would you certainly don't have to sharing your experiences i feel like i feel like it's a big part of of us helping each other um to evolve And to know that there, you know, that the grass can be greener on the other side. So, thank you guys. I love you. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.